Hello everyone, my name is K3GamerK3, and today I'd like to talk about two different methods to create full CTM textures in Minecraft using Optifine. First method to my left is a little bit more classic, uh, but the corners can get difficult, and the second method to my right with the lapis is much, much easier than the old method. Um, and I'm going to be going over both today. I'm not going to be doing all the photo editing to save time, but I just want to talk about the processes and how to make this really easy for you. Okay, so let's talk about the first method. So in this method, you would start with your uh, closed off on all sides block, pretty much a black zero from the guide. And what you do for this method is kind of copy it next to each other and then merge these horizontally with a, like a blender tool. Uh, if you have Photoshop, it's really easy. If you have paint.net like I do, I recommend downloading a plugin. Uh, what I have, 8VF filter, and these plugins, and it's called Wireworm. And uh, it's pretty easy to do stuff in here. You can take, uh, and kicking this up a bit. Um, any kind of segment, replace it, and it kind of merges it out for you. And then you just kind of mess with the whole thing. Pretty easy to do some blending, especially if you're getting the layers to go together. The only problem is that likes to crash a lot, so I recommend saving your progress every time you try to use that program. Because uh, it, it works about once, and then the second time you try to use it, it'll crash. So, save a lot. Um, okay, so after you combine those horizontal textures, it should look something like that. And then we're going to do the same thing vertically. This whole time you're merging your photos, really mind your corners. You don't want any of your edits to touch each other. And that can get very difficult, especially around the corners. This one makes it a little bit easier since there is no texture to merge right, right around the corner. So... And we'll stack them, and then we'll just take some of these layers and place them down here to merge them, something like that. And one thing to be mindful of is you do want to have texture on the edge of your connection. That's pretty much the whole point of having a connected texture, is that it looks like it's connected through there. So if we layer these together, you can see that crosses right there. And if I change the order of these, I mean, obviously that's going to cut right through the texture too. All right, so what you want to do is take pieces from your vertical and have it connect up through there without touching any of what you edited before. And again, that can get a little tricky, but when you're done, it should look a little something like that. And then we're just going to kind of take, you know, this chunk plus a little bit of like that, and we're going to take this down, put it here and get it pretty much so it's like this all the way around. Should look something like that. And this is where it doesn't connect at a corner. Um, but you also want a version of this where it does. So blend that out too. And that's all the pieces that you need. So you can use all these to create all your tiles. So pretty much what we've just created and if I can show just one at a time here. We started with our zero tile. Created tile number one and tile number three. Now to get tile number two, it's pretty much the right half of one and the left half of two. And you're just going to kind of combine them. And I'll show you that a little bit more, but... Um, just to keep going with this, have tile 12, 36, and we can do that same thing with 24, where we just take the bottom half of that one and the top half of that one, and it works perfectly. We also have tile 13, or sorry, uh, tile 4, tile 5, 16, and 17, where it creates those, um, those L shapes. And finally, we've got tile 13, 15, 37, and 39. 
Um, and again, we can connect these the same way we're going to do with 1 and 3, uh, 12 and 36. We can combine you know, 13 and 37 to get 25. Um, so I'm going to show you just a quick, quick sample of that. What I recommend doing is taking the tiles you've made so far and moving them to a separate file that is, uh, you know, just the one texture resolution. So this was our zero, and if we copied out that one tile, we got that. If we copied out the three tile, we got that. So you see the similarities here. That middle section does not change at all between these because that's we didn't have to touch that for the editing. So if we combine those, we'll get that. Just that left half, that right half together will give you that. Uh, and same thing, creating all the rest of these. Um, you do the same thing vertically. You can do the same thing, getting from 13 and 37 to get the 25, or combining 25 and 27 to get the 26. Um, and just to show you, that's what connected on all sides will look like. That does move a little bit. That's not great. Again, this is not a perfect method, and that's why I'm going to show you an easier one. But I will say this makes it pretty easy for less uh, resolution textures, uh, especially if you're making a, a CTM for default. It's much easier just to put those few pixels in. Um, but for high quality stuff like this, where there's a lot of blending in Photoshop, it's not a good time. And uh, Minding those corners, kind of like I was saying earlier, gets really tricky. I was trying to do it with this one, and I kept getting these really funky lines. And uh, that's why I came up with an easier method here. So for this method, we're going to start with a fully tileable background and border texture. And this isn't a great one because it's got that line and it's going to show up a lot in repeating patterns, but it'll be all right for you know the small ore pockets, I think. Um, and if you're trying to make your texture fully connected, a great tool to use is Rotate and Zoom. Set it to pan 1 and 1 and set it on tiling. It actually does the whole thing there. So you can see this looks pretty good when it's all connected. So, I'm going to take your border texture, duplicate it, uh, crop it, trim it, gradient it out, whatever you need to do to get just like a little edge. And you're just going to do this for all four sides. Uh, it's really easy to do this in Photoshop, and it's actually pretty easy to do it in Paint.net too. If you're using free software like me, um, just a you know quick and dirty. There's a gradient tool, set it on transparency, hold shift to get a straight line, and I do recommend counting your pixels. Oh, that didn't show because I had the background there. Let's just undo that real quick. All right, so let's actually show this. Um, yeah, so I recommend counting your pixels so your sides stay even. So if you hold shift, you get a nice straight line, and you can gradient that as far or as little as you want. Something like that's pretty good. Maybe a little bit more. Depends what you like, what texture you're doing, all that stuff. Personal preference. Alright. So once you do that, you want to do it again for all your sides. We got these. So that's pretty much going to be what our black zero looks like. The next thing you want to do is a little trickier. But what you want to do is select at a 45 degree angle. And uh, it's not the easiest to do that. Stuff like that. Uh, it can be really tricky. I'm not sure about Photoshop, but in Paint.net, um, there is kind of a cheaty way to get a selection area like this. Uh, so if you start with your whole block here, and you use your lasso tool, if you start in a very corner and be very precise with your pixels, you can find them you know, right down here at the bottom. 
Um, so I'm not going to be careful here because it's going to take forever to line up, but you know, pretty much start at zero, 0, come outside the block and go around the outside of it. You're going to force it, and again, just line it up very carefully with that corner. Very careful with the pixel count, so it's an exactly 45 degree angle, stuff like that. Um, it forces that line to draw that 45 for you. The problem is it's going to smooth it unless you take pixelated, and that's what I'd recommend. Otherwise, it transpares. It does a little transparency around the middle, and it doesn't line up quite right. So yeah, just make sure you have pixelated selected. And if we zoom in here, see it just does that perfectly. All you want to do to have this as a guide that you can use over and over is copy from one of your solid images, either the background or the border, it really doesn't matter. Copy and then paste that in a new layer. So from that new layer, if we're trying to use the guide, you can use a magic wand. And of course if you click in here it's going to do weird shit, but click in the open area, it just does that perfectly. So I'd recommend using that and then for the other half of it you can invert your selection and just get the exact other half of it. Uh, and then same thing for the other angle. Just make two guides and you're good to go. Let's say we're just looking at that edge. We select at the 45 we want to target just that little corner there. We're going to copy and paste into a new layer. Oops, if I'm actually on the layer I'm trying to copy. There we go. Okay, so we took just that little corner. And if we invert that 45 selection and do the same thing with the adjacent corner, it would be this one. Copy from that and paste in that same layer. Now we got a nice little corner bump. That would be like a tile 45 here, or just a little edge there. But if you do this with the rest of the corners, you can combine the edges and the corners to create any of the tiles. So this one would be like a 17, for example. Um, so I already actually have one of those made up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just use all your combinations of edges and corners to create any of the blocks you need. Uh, this one's block three. There's block two. Uh, obviously, none of them would be block 26. There's your 25. Any of those corner combinations, there's your 46. Um, I just be careful not to layer the corners with the edges. See it gets thicker right right in that little edge there because the transparencies will stack and thicken. I recommend unselecting any of the pieces that you're not actively using. Even if it looks hidden, it's a little cleaner if you have them uh, invisible. So for this one, all I have to do is save each tile. Um, I'm not quite sure how Photoshop works, but if you're trying to save as, and I'm just going to use this in progress photo here. Uh, this looks like it's tile 18. 18 dot uh, PNG. Save. Yep, yep. So. To this is going to flatten all your layers, and that's fine. Just hit OK. Quickly hit Undo, and you're back where you were, and, and it does still save your item. Alright, so that's how you make all the textures. You want to save, however you do it, you want to save all your tiles to a folder. Alright, so in your app data roaming dot minecraft you have your resource packs whatever your name in your pack you know how to find it assets minecraft optifine ctm and you want to make a folder for the ore that you're using 0 through 46 all the tiles are saved it's probably a good idea to go and double check them 
And then you also want to make a little dot properties file here. Um, so you can just right click new text document, edit that, and um, you want it to say match blocks equals your block type, method equals CTM, tiles equals 0 through 46. Technically you can name these whatever you want, but you're going to want to list them in order here. Uh, 0 through 46 is the same as doing 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to 46. So if you name them weird things, you just have to list them out that way. And it's a lot, a lot simpler just to do 0 through 46. Faces equals all. That just means all sides of the block is going to get this texture. If you only wanted to do the sides um, or the top and bottom, you can list those as top, bottom, north, south, east, west. Whatever faces you want to do, you can actually have multiple. Um, probably what I'm going to end up doing with the coal is doing a different top and bottom CTM texture, and that's fine. But you want to make sure you save this as all files and do a dot properties. And that's it. Open up your game and see how it looks. Alright everyone, thanks for watching. My name is K3GamerK3 and I'll see you next time.